welcome to today's program. Today's lecture is on a topic that is not only relatable and relevant to us all, but in fact critical to our existence and to those of the future. Breathtaking winters of Delhi, how to survive. To deliver this lecture, we are delighted to have distinguished pulmonologist Dr. Ashish Jain with us. But before we begin today's program, ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have in our midst Ambassador Bhaskati Mukherjee, President of the India Habitat Center. May I please invite Ambassador Mukherjee on stage to grace us with her words and also introduce today's speaker. which was that 
when you do a lung x-ray to, uh, to eliminate, or rather a lung biopsy to eliminate cancer, sometimes on rare occasions, air gets into the hole and the lungs start floating. To put the lungs back, there's a very cozy little procedure in English, which is called curly pigtail. Pigtail. Pigtail makes you feel, think of a British farm with kids with cozy little pigs roaming around and people coming and stroking them, etc., etc. But actually, it's a procedure by which you insert something into the back of the patient, into the lungs, and it opens out and looks like a hanger. It's also actually quite painful because it's done under local anesthesia. So when the time came to take it out, I looked at it and I said, this is a cloth hanger. <laughs> he said, yes. I said, you never told me. He said, naturally, I never scared my patient. So I said, well, I'll tell you what. This curly pigtail, or whatever you call it in, in English, it's real name, I'm giving you. He said, what is that? I said, you're, a, you're from North India, Hindi speaking person. I am nicknaming this procedure Suar Kapooch. And now in Max Hospital, everyone calls it Suar Kapooch. I said, because Suar Kapooch is double curl, like a hanger. And then you understand why it's called big scale, because it has two hangers hanging on both sides of your lungs to push it together. So these are the various things I learned while I was under his care. And I'm going to end by welcoming him very warmly to Habitat, telling him that the pollution got hold of me yesterday. And so I lost my voice. So then I told my team, I said, they will all come and I will all praise him and they'll say, but what kind of cure did they give ma'am? Because for one year she's still coughing. And you see, I haven't coughed in two months, right? So I'm on the path to recovery. I'll end with a small poem, which is called Breathe. This poem is by Becky Hemsley, and it's actually about letting women breathe, because I'm a strong leader of the women's movement. But letting me breathe is also a sign of what Delhi needs, which is letting us breathe. So I'm going to read out four lines to you and hand over to him. In Breathe, it says, this is about what they expect from a woman. And when the woman achieves it, they say, no, 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 this is not, this is not good. Do the opposite. So it says, she sat at the back, and they said she was shy. She led from the front, and they hated her pride. They asked her advice and then questioned her guidance. They branded her loud, then were shocked by her silence. Then the poem ends. Then she found a small clearing, surrounded by pearls, and she stopped and she heard what the trees said to her. And she sat there for hours, not wanting to leave, for the forest said nothing. It just let her breathe. And so I conclude by saying that, please, Delhi, let us breathe. And let us listen to very caring lung specialists like Dr. Jain, and let's hear what he has to tell us so that we can ultimately manage to survive these long winters until we can put our pollution problem together. So Dr. Jain, I'll thank you very much for the stage. And I will go back to you. Thank you. about it. 
uh, we don't even discuss if it, it has moved from the headlines to you know small little AQI levels in the newspapers. Um, but unfortunately, our body have not become immune to this, and therefore we must talk about it and we must try and improve our living conditions. Now these are certain things that I'll be um, touching upon during next 30 minutes or so. So let's start with the jargons that we use daily. So there are some primary pollutants, there are some secondary pollutants, there are indoor and outdoor pollutants. Let me tell you one more thing. It, this is a myth, let me burst it. Uh, the indoor pollution is up to 10 times more, you know, the indoor air, rather, is up to 10 times more polluted than the outdoor air, right? Not only does it have uh, the outdoor air coming in, bringing in the pollution, but um, all the stuff that are generated in within the house, you know, the kitchen smoke, the room spray, the perfume, the animal dander, the uh, dust from the carpet, the mites, the mosquitoes, the uh, spatula chaff, and the agarbattis, and the root batteries, uh, and whatnot. So the indoor pollution is um, far worse, although today, uh, tonight, we'll be, uh, you know, I'll be sticking to the uh, outdoor air pollution. So these are some jargons, and then this is the word that we hear every day, and now it has become, uh, you know, um, synonymous with uh, our daily, daily talking. What is the EQL level today? So this was uh, this was first coined by the Environmental Protection Agency in U.S., and it is an index for reporting the air quality. <coughs> India accepted it in September 2004 by Central Pollution Control Board under Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, and it is also called as NAQI, that is the National uh, AQI. What is AQI? It is a composite index of, of all these uh, pollutants, the major uh, six, eight pollutants. Some countries, they measure six, some countries, India measures eight. So ozone, PM10, PM2.5, SO2, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide, uh, NSD, lead, etc. So these are the individual pollutants. The, there are multiple centers all across India and multiple centers here in Delhi as well. They monitor these, uh, these levels in the ambient air uh, continuously. And then they average it out and then based on this, the AQR level is generated. And based on the AQR level, you know, we enforce or even. Now these are the various uh, categories that we have. We rarely, sorry, we rarely see this good uh, category um, here in India, especially in Delhi. But we are very familiar with severe and very severe. Category. Now there are some primary pollutants that, uh, these are the things that we uh, generate, like uh, you know, uh, automobile engines, the, the industries, the natural disasters like volcanoes and wildfires, etc. So these are the primary pollutants. And then these primary pollutants, they react in the atmosphere uh, under sunlight and, and some moisture and other gases, and then they cause the secondary pollutants. And both these primary pollutants and the secondary pollutants, they are responsible for the kind of pollution that we see every day. So these are the primary pollutants. These are for some of the primary pollutants, major being the carbon monoxide, and uh, where they come from, major being the transportation and uh, the industries and industrial processes, etc. And this is uh, the Delhi's daily chart that I could, uh, you know, take out from Google. And I don't know what I was doing on this 18th of July, 2021. Must be very happy man on that day. That is the only one green day that we can see in 365 years. 
you know, this is a big horror story. Now, what are the causes? Uh, the causes of the air pollution, I will touch very briefly. We all know uh, the industry and energy supply, uh, all these mills, the factories, the power plants, the refineries, etc. The dust, very poor infrastructure, you move out of this Lutyens Delhi a little few kilometers and you will see that the, you know, the sides of the roads, the shoulder as they say, uh, are still unpaved and they, there are plenty of dust and every time a truck or auto rickshaw or motorbike runs through these uh, shoulders, you know, it generates air and puts it back in the air. Uh, it generates dust, I mean. The agricultural practices, uh, the ill-famed Parali burning, the transport, we can't do without it. We talk about uh, the pollution and we drive the cars every day. The waste management, we can hardly handle our own waste. I think Delhi can only handle 40 to 50 percent of the waste that the legs generate. So we are uh, living on a garbage dump and, uh, and then plenty of household energy that we generate. So uh, these are the major causes of pollution and behind these uh, uh, pollution are we. We are responsible for the air we are breathing at that same air. If I don't stop driving a car, if I don't stop putting on the air condition, if I do not um, ask my society not to put the generator on to give me 24 hour supply, if I stop burning or if I uh, dispose of my waste properly, I have a right to question the government and I can ask the government to make the policies for this. So I am equally responsible for the air that you are breathing. What are the common air pollutants? I'll just run through. Um, not that uh, it will, uh, you know, it may add some value to your knowledge base. So we'll just run through these uh, quickly. The ozone or the ground level ozone is colorless and highly irritant gas. Uh, so the automobile combustion, the uh, power plants, the refinery, they generate this ozone and sometimes this ozone is also a uh, sort of a secondary pollutant. Um, you know, the pollutants, they, uh, in presence of the heat and uh, sunlight, uh, they uh, make ozone and this ozone is different from the ozone that we are worried in which we are creating gold, right? This, uh, this is a troposphere ozone or ground level ozone or bad ozone as we say and this um, is generated by us. So we don't want this and we don't want hole in this. And what does it do? It causes burning of eyes, throat, irritated mucous membranes so you cough, cough and cough. Uh, because of this, it leads to shortness of breath, wheezing, coughing, the asthma gets exacerbated, the COPD gets exacerbated, and so on and so forth. The particulate matter, um, these are the dust, dirt, soot, smoke, drops of liquids in the ambient air. These, uh, these are the particulate matters, both the 10 and 2.5, and even smaller one. The construction, the wildfires, the wood, uh, you know, the woodwork burning, and the dusty roads. These are responsible for generating the particulate matters in um, in the ambient air. If we uh, measure it with the, um, or just to have an idea about the size of this, this is a human hair, and these are the fine beach sands, uh, right? So this is the size of PM10 and on top of that here is lying PM2.5. The problem with the uh, PM2.5 and even smaller particles are is that they are respirable particles. They go, you inhale them, they go deep inside your lung in the alveoli where the air exchange is taking place 
and they cause damage over there, right? The PM10 can <coughs> work, I'll tell you <coughs> next slide. Uh, so this is the PM10. Majority is because of the dust that we see, the infrastructure. <coughs> we are so happy building roads and factories and bridges and whatnot, but at the same time, there's a cost to it. And the PM2.5, the waste burning and the transport is the most important culprit uh, to generate this um, PM2.5. Now the PM10 uh, can go up to the uh, major PMAs there. As I said, they, these are the coarse particles and because of their size and the heavy nature and uh, coupled with the um, protective mechanism that the God has given us, uh, these particles, they get trapped in the upper airways, right? But the PM2.5, it goes deep into your lung and causes damages here. And there are still smaller particles. They can even cross the barrier of that alveoli, reach into the bloodstream, go to various other organs and uh, cause damage in, in the other organs as well. So what are the short term effects? You go to a dusty environment, you go to a visibly dusty environment, highly polluted environment like a factory, like a roadside, like a farm house, or a place where there is a burning, uh, you know, there is a pure burning. You can have this cough and breathing difficulty, eyes, nose and throat irritation, we all have experienced this. You know, headache and anxiety, which we don't know why it is, but probably it is because of the pollution, the skin irritation, allergies, and many other things. But what are the long-term effects? The long-term effects of uh, continuous exposure of these particulate matter is stroke, cardiovascular disease, COPD, lung cancer, diabetes, etc. So it's not that that if we have a bad weather or if we have bad air, let's say for three months in Delhi and rest of the other nine months are good, but no, we have increased our chances to have these complications in our life. The nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide, these are two, you know, uh, are usually combined and called as NOx, and this is a Nitric oxide is a colorless and is oxidized in the atmosphere from that is that it becomes a secondary pollutant in. So it is a colorless and is oxidized in the atmosphere to form nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide is has an odor. So little dusty odor that we smell uh, on a heavily polluted morning is this nitrogen dioxide and the sulfur dioxide that I'll uh, talk about it. And it is acidic and highly corrosive gas, right? In poorly ventilated situation, indoor domestic appliances such as gas stove and gas or wood heaters can be a significant source of nitrogen oxides. And you see this every day. You can't see the sky for three, four, five months in a row. That's because of this. Because it leads to photochemical smog and they give that yellowish brown color of smog that gives you a sinking feeling when you are driving. You know, uh, I, I drive through this Barapula every day, so this is a little elevated, so all the buildings are small buildings, and you don't see, and you see a vast expanse of sky, and you're not seeing that sky. I have not seen a sky for God knows <coughs> how many months or years, right? So that sinking feeling is because of uh, this nitrogen oxides. Again, it causes um, the same irritant. This is irritant and acidic um, in nature, and therefore it causes burning eyes, this uh, irritated mucous membrane, so you keep on coughing. Your cough doesn't stop, right? Um, Prior to coming, now it's been 10 years uh, in Delhi, or maybe 14 years in Delhi, sorry. So my initial three, four years were not so bad. We never had this kind of a pollution. So patients would come.
come with allergic cough, you give them medications and then they would never come back because their cough is all gone. Or maybe it's just a phone con consultation and it's gone. But now, it is very difficult. It is very distressing for the patient and depressing for me uh, that I can't cure this simple cough. And the reason is these things. So it leads to a lot of respiratory irritation, emphysema, asthma symptoms, increasing breathing resistance, uh, and um, uh, decreased compliance and uh, pulmonary inflammation. All these problems in the lung, as well as it causes allergic things, the problems in the skin, and we have discussed about the cardiovascular disease, as well as in the upper respiratory tract also. The sulfur dioxide is colorless, reactive air pollutant with a strong odor. So you can't see this, but it has got a odor. And again, the refineries and the power plants are a very important source of the sulfur dioxide. And uh, just if I can add that, you know, the government of the day um, worries about Taj Mahal more than the local people. You know that this. This because of the Matra oil refinery. You know, there was a lot of production of the uh, sulfur dioxide, and therefore um, the Taj Mahal was becoming paler and paler, and so they took a lot of initiative. And uh, Agra probably has uh, continuous electricity supply uh, much before than many other cities because people were using generators so to discourage them because. Um, we thought that a shining Taj Mahal uh, is very important. So uh, the effects on the uh, health is again shortness of breath, uh, wheezing, asthma, uh, worsening, uh, pulmonary inflammation, increased risk of heart attack, all these things are caused by this. So this is just to give you a visual representation of what happens. This is the normal airway. Uh, these small tubes that carries the air from uh, uh, from uh, your mouth where you are breathing from your nostril down into your oropharynx and then the trachea it divides into two and then divides and divides and divides and divides ultimately to reach what is called as the alveoli where the air exchange takes place. So this is the normal airway and it, the, it has got a wide and nice and round hole uh, tube through which the air can move up and down. And it is all surrounded by the smooth muscles. Now when they come in exposure to the irritants, when they come, um, uh, when there are irritants and the particulate matter, these airways, they naturally react because they don't want a noxious thing to come and destroy the alveoli. They have to protect the alveoli. So in the event, what happens is that they shrink. Uh, they uh, go into spasm and now when the uh, cross-section, if you see, and the human size gets reduced, then what happens? Then uh, you are breathless because you know, the air is not going in, you are wheezing, you are coughing, and all these symptoms are because of this phenomenon. So you have ammonia, uh, next on the list, uh, mostly produced to the agricultural processes and uh, it reacts to atmosphere to produce the uh, particulate matter, again uh, secondary pollutant, which has significant impact, uh, health impacts and we have discussed about the cardiovascular and the respiratory thing and not only this, it causes the acidification of the habitats and it also is responsible for reducing the biodiversity. The lead uh, is also um, one of the um, compounds that are being tracked by um, the Pollution Control Board. So you have these automobile and industrial emissions that leads to lead <coughs> contaminating the atmosphere. And from there, it, it not only goes into your uh, inhaled air and into your lungs, but it also goes into and contaminates the water, it contaminates the food, uh, food cycle, and so on and so forth. Now, what can we do? Now, this is most important, and that's where I come in. So, it is very important to have a healthy lifestyle. You live in a polluted city or a clean city, you live on the hill, 
hills, you live on the plains, you live uh, in the desert, wherever. A healthy <laughs> lifestyle is very important. Until and unless your doctor has asked you not to drink water because you are suffering from, let's say, a heart disease or kidney disease or stuff like this, please drink fluids as much as you can, at least three to four liters of fluid, be it plain water or in terms of any fluids, um, um, you know, any soup or lassi, chaat, dahi, uh, fruit juice, anything. Avoid refrigerated and canned things with the preservative, but as much of fluid as you can, please drink the fluid. God has given us uh, tons and tons of minerals and vitamins and antioxidants and the stuff that is required to revitalize your body and to um, you know keep the dis uh, disease at bay and um, and uh, you know to give to improve your immunity. It's only that we don't listen to it. Um, so pick up three colors every day and have three uh, different colors of vegetables or fruits or um, and anything and everything that can be eaten raw. So pick up three things every day and eat it. And that will replenish your, you don't need uh, supplements or you don't need these uh, vitamins over the counter um, or prescription vitamins. Uh, there are certain diseases in which you do need, but by and large you don't. This now entire world is doing except <laughs> India. Separate colors every day or same three colors every day? Anything. I mean, I'm just giving you an example that pick up three different kind of fruits every day and same same fruits can be continued. You can do. I mean, uh, there's a limit to the number of changes that you can do. Seasonal vegetables. Seasonal vegetables, seasonal fruits, um, you know, you must have. Fruits and vegetables cooked together or separately? Anything, anything. You know? Eaten raw, he said. Anything that can be eaten raw without cooking is uh, the point to be taken home. So I was saying that this now entire world is doing except Indians. You know, not only does it revitalize. Um, not only revitalize your life, it improves the immunity. Um, so we have got plenty of asanas, uh, the physical, uh, you know, uh, stretching, bending exercises. Then we have a uh, lot of breathing exercises that improves your immunity <coughs> and um, uh, and revitalizes your life. So I think daily practicing yoga, uh, everything. So practice the yoga every day, and that will uh, boost up your immunity and give you, um, you know, uh, arsenal to fight the disease and the pollution. Now, one should always maintain hygiene, right? <coughs> especially about this cough etiquette. So if you are suffering, if you are sneezing, if you are coughing, make sure that you put a handkerchief on your uh, mouth, covering the mouth and the nose, uh, or a tissue. If it is a tissue, please dispose it properly, wash your hands, and if you are sick, please uh, wear a mask if you are moving around in public. No alcohol. Uh, in, uh, if we are living in a poly uh, polluted city, right? So avoid alcohol as much as you can, especially in the winters. Um, I don't know how people will take this advice, <laughs> but um, you know, try and avoid alcohol as much as you can, because not only it will dehydrate your body, and it will, uh, you know, the ice that we add also causes you know, vasoconstriction and reduces the uh, effectiveness of the barrier, the natural barrier that the God has given us. Absolutely no smoking. In any case, you are smoking 30 cigarettes a day. Why do you want to add to it? Now, I was just discussing before this session and uh, it so happened that we stumbled upon a topic of hookah and vaping. So I am adding to this right now. Um, smoking is bad very bad, but hookah and e-cigarettes is far
followers. You, this is my humble request to you as a responsible doctor and you being a responsible citizen. Please take this message to your loved ones, especially the young kids. Do not do hookah. Stay away from e-cigarettes. And I'll just take one minute to tell you why. You know, when you smoke a cigarette, at the end of the day, you have a count of it. Doc, I smoke 10 cigarettes a day. Doc, I smoke 20 cigarettes a day. You have a count. We know the content. We have a studies of 50 years or maybe 80, 85 years before it was, you know, uh, and now we know that this many fat years causes COPD. These many fat years causes cancer. These many fat years causes this. Now when I'm buying a packet of cigarette, I know that this is what the problem is and it is my personal choice, right, to buy this and to accept the risk. I have decided this. Problem with hookah is everybody thinks that this is safe. Everybody thinks, oh, you do hookah, if you can. Right? If you're, if you know, a young kid is smoking and father or mother catch hold of that kid, you know, they'll definitely scold him. But I have seen mothers and fathers taking their sons and daughters, the young cup, young kids, to the hookah bar. Right? So there is no social taboo. Plus, once you start taking hookah, there are five friends. They'll spend hours and hours together. There is no count to it. Right? When are you starting? When are you ending? And more importantly, when you are not actively doing hookah, just sitting in the society or, or in that vicinity, you are inhaling the fumes of hookah. Right? So, what you are inhaling is much more than what you think that you are inhaling. That is point number one. Point number two, and very serious thing is, we don't know what is there in the hookah. We have just locally purchased it from a shop in Khan market or a pan ki dukan or a shop elsewhere. There is nothing we don't know. It does not have the list of contents on it. It is not certified by ISI. No lab has certified that. It's all made in the back lanes of small ghetto. Whether they are putting paints in this or lead in this or arsenic in this or charas in this or ganja in this or heroin in this, we don't know. Right? And we don't know what is the impact of this hookah smoking on the lungs. Because there is no standardization. In cigarette, it was easy because it was standardized. Right? So we knew that, okay, this much content of nicotine these many years is equal to cancer. How will you standardize hookah? How will you, um, you know, find out? And plus, we don't know. The cigarette takes 20 years, 25 years, 30 years of continuous smoking, and that leads to cancer. <coughs> hookah is a new thing. After 35 years, if we see a pandemic of cancer, we won't even know that it was hookah, that benign, friendly, so cute hookah that has led to this. Right? So please take this message along. Please educate the younger ones. Please educate the society. Please tell your sons and daughters and grandparents, uh, grandchildren, do not do hookah. It's very bad. Coming back to the topic. 
so there are patients who may need to optimize their treatment uh, so everybody and anybody who is asthmatic or suffering from COPD please make sure that you regularize especially at the onset of the winter I always ask my COPD and asthma patients uh, sorry yeah doctor why is E vaping uh, bad same for same thing same same thing we don't know what is the in the canister we don't know there is no end to it, you know. Cigarettes, you can't smoke in a closed car or closed room, right? E-vaping, you can do. So, it's practically the same thing, right? So, um, so there are patients of asthma and COPD. I always tell them that please visit your doctor once uh, around Dashera and once after Holy, right? Dashera, we increase the treatment. Holy, we reduce the treatment for most of the for most of the patients, right? Uh, the patients on inhaler may need to be stepped up to nebulizers uh, because um, they are <coughs> breathless, and some patients may need to be further put on some steroids. I do not prescribe. Uh, that you should take steroids over the counter and this is just for the information please talk to your doctor before you um, take these steroids. So there are some COPD patients, there are some ILE patients who may need uh, oxygen therapy and then there are CPAPs and the BiPAPs that are required <coughs> for certain obstructive sleep apnea patient and the COPD patient and the uh, patients with weak lungs they may need to go on the CPAP and BiPAP therapy. Uh, if the doctor advises so, then please take this and follow the instruction. There are certain vaccinations, the pneumococcal vaccine and the influenza vaccine. It, uh, because we are in that uh, wintry area, where uh, wintry time where the pollution is also there and uh, where uh, the incidence of the viral fever is also increasing, so we must take this pneumococcal and influenza vaccine if advised by the doctor. When the particle pollution levels are high, take steps to limit the amount of air you breathe in while you are outside, right? So uh, you must think about spending more time indoor while the, uh, where the particle pollution levels are usually lower. Um, till five years ago, I would ask my patients that air purifiers are good to have. I mean, if you can afford it, why not to have it? If you can't, then leave it. Uh, I have changed my stand. I tell them that, uh, especially if you have an elderly uh, patient, if you have um, newborns, right, uh, you must try and get the air purifier, right? Uh, choose easier outdoor activities like walking instead of running so you don't breathe as hard. If you're going for a morning walk or stroll, avoid early morning and late in the evening. Usually try and go uh, during the, um, when the sun is there. strenuous exercises, right? These are the things that you would do um, if, if it is heavily polluted, if the AQI level is high, take a lift, don't climb up the stairs. And avoid busy roads and the highway where um, the particulate matter <coughs> is usually worse because of the emissions from the cars and the trucks. You know, um, the AQI level um, that we see on the TV screen is um, much better than the AQI level at the Ames Choraha or Dhalakuma, you know, just for the traffic policeman, the one who is standing over there. So it is much worse for him, unfortunately, right? And with all these things, I really thank you for your patience. Um, if there are any questions or queries, uh, I encourage you to scan this and form, uh, fill the feedback form for me. Uh, so that I can refine my talk next time when I meet um, people like this. Thank you.
I think so. I'm not advertising for air purifier, but the things it. are that, you know.
constant uh, you know, 24 hours AC. We all want uninterrupted power supply. We all want, you know, I um, would move around in the uh, luxurious bungalows and proteins around. You would see the chokidars and the security guards, uh, you know, burning wood. Right? So uh, we are responsible for this, but you are right. Everybody must, um, unless we uh, ask for it, we will not get it. Uh, Dr. Sir, just uh, clarification on. Yes, PM 2.5 is a definitely a cumulative thing. The um, more number of days in a dusty environment, uh, the more number of um, you know carcinogens and the toxic agents that you accumulate, and more uh, chances of side effects with this. Uh, how to clean the lungs? Well, I think these four or five things that I've said, plenty of water, fresh fruits and vegetable, uh, yoga, um, these are the things that I can think of right now, but no, no um, prescribable medicine or or any procedure for this. Dr. Sir, just to clarify this indoor versus outdoor activity. So we have seen government advisory also, you know, the pollution levels are high, don't go outdoor, stay indoor. While as you said, the indoor pollution level is much higher than what it is outside. So I am a little confused. Is yes. it safer to so stay everybody is or is safer to go to a park yes. and Yes, I totally agree with this. Everybody is confused and the governments are super confused, right? Uh, but here is the logic. If it is visibly dusty, if it is really to the levels of 900, I mean, when you are staying indoors, you have air purifier, you can run the AC and you can do, um, limit your, uh, you know, exercises also so that you don't breathe too faster. Uh, and there is another reason why government encourages you to stay indoor is ki please car not leke jau, don't add to the pollution, right? So uh, this is what my explanation is, um, that if it is visibly dusty, if it is really smoggy, then it's better to sit on a couch, watch Netflix. Uh, <laughs> and not what about doing some steaming or gargling, would that help the sort of doing? I, I don't think so. Uh, well, um, if you are coming back from a visibly dusty or, or polluted thing, you know, you see a little itchy on your face, a little eyes burning. Um, wash your face frequently. Wash your hands frequently. So, you know, that will uh, take away the all the dust and the toxins that you have accumulated on your face and in your eyes. Right? So that you can, you can do. So, I think that vehicle pollution contributes significantly to the menace of pollution as we see it today. What can be done to exhort people to use public transport? Because it's just not happening. There are certain things which the people can do, certain things which the government should do and has to do. The problem of stubborn burning can only be sought out between the state government and central government, in which the general public has nothing to do. So why can't the government do what it is supposed to do? And regarding yoga, I heard that pranayam is very good for giving strength to the lungs. Is it true? Yes, yes. So for the first question, two, three questions at a time. Yes, after after this. So um, the first lengthy question, very appropriate. This is the same question from me to you. You know, I am no different. Um, yes, government should do something. There are certain things that government can do, but at least we can start trying on our own um, whatever we can do and offer, right? Start, uh, you know, you can't you can't avoid uh, taking your car, but at least park the car properly. Don't you know? Don't encroach on the um, on 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 the road. Don't park your car and cause a traffic jam, right? At least this is what we can do. We can start doing this, right? Follow the traffic rules, right? Um, driving your lane, at least this is this much what we can do. Let us start doing this. Uh, it is a cumulative effort. I think um, um, unless everybody does it, you know, as, as we say in this Ubuntu, Right? Um, we all succeed together.
there is an important question which she asked you, which was about pranayama. And I remember you telling me when I when you released me from hospital that I should not do pranayama for at least three weeks uh, because I was still recovering. So maybe you can like to clarify that there are certain exercises of pranayama which can be done by people who have healthy lungs and some pranayama exercises which the yoga teacher will also tell you not to do if you have some lung problem as well. But is it so looking for pranayama in this head? Yes, 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 yes. I mean you are breathing. <laughs> you can't stop breathing. No, no. no. Uh, I, I think that's okay. But um, I, I can see that, you know, the memories of those uh, seven, ten days of admission, twelve days, twelve days of admission, my God, uh, haunts you all the time. No, no, no. And, uh, <laughs> that is, that is, anyway. There was, uh, there was a lady at the back also who wanted to ask, maybe after you, you could pass the mic. Right? How effective uh, are these type of uh, breach types and how effective are the masks? Masks, yes. I will, I will tell you about masks. Why did you ask your question also? Uh, I have seen, I wanted the answer to what uh, Ambassador asked about the vaccine. Yes, sure. There is one question, somebody here wanted to ask the question. Yes. Oh, Pichete, Pichete. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Um, there's an IIT study that if in NCR, people were to use cycle for five kilometers, these people who got fit, then we save around 500,000 liters of fuel every day. So that was uh, one thing. Second is for cyclists, can we use a double, um, can we use an N99 mask, slow cycling with a double nozzle? Yeah, I'll take this. Yeah, and second is just a comment. Uh, we support the child PGI, where 800 children come for, from all over the country, neighboring countries, uh, with blood donations. And I find that during this time, when we do camps, the numbers have fallen to one fourth the donor themselves are on antibiotics. So with this takeaway of a healthier lifestyle, I hope to improve this number over time with this uh, message going through. Sure, sure. So we like to answer these three So I will answer first with your uh, pneumococcal vaccine. Um, and um, you wanted to ask whether your pneumonia was because of this? No, no, no. I was, I said, that I took the pneumococcal vaccine, and then two weeks later I got what is called, what you call, atypical double pneumonia, both lungs affected. Yeah. And then you explained to me that the vaccine that I had taken was to protect me against another kind of pneumonia, yeah. and that the pneumonia that I had, which as a result of which I was in the hospitalized, comes from an, a different kind of infection. So I thought maybe you can explain that. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, we doctors try uh, every time to confuse our patients, right? Because we know certain words and terminologies which the general public don't know. Um, pneumonia is any infection in the lung. If you see a patch on the x-ray, that's pneumonia, right? Um, but in common parlance that we uh, talk about pneumonia is we are referring to a bacterial pneumonia Right? We are talking about pneumonia when you have a high fever, cough, rusty sputum, chest pain, and, and you're sick looking, right? Um, so people call this as pneumonia, but in medical terminology, pneumonia is anything that, um, uh, that can cause a patch on the x-ray or on the CT scan, right? So that's number one. So there is a difference between what I call this as pneumonia versus what the common people, they call this as pneumonia, number one. Number two, as regards to pneumococcal vaccine, the pneumococcal vaccine is effective for on uh, a specific type of a strain, a specific type of a bacteria in uh, pneumococcus. Uh, you know, um, only that bacteria will be affected by this. And the incidence of this particular bacteria causing a pneumonia in the general public is very high, right? There are some people like, unfortunately, um, Madeline. <coughs> you know, she was suffering from what we call as a atypical pneumonia. That's a different, uh, different
different variety. So any pneumococcal vaccine uh, will, uh, you know, uh, decrease the incidence of a proper pneumonia uh, only in cases of, uh, you know, this pneumococcal thing, right? So this is about the pneumococcal vaccine. About the masks, the N95 mask and respirable and non breathable masks and all that, uh, I would discourage use of mask, right? Unless you are going in a visibly dusty environment, right? Uh, you are off-roading and you see your dust around, you may want to put a mask on, right? But these masks, they have got a, a, a limited life, right? And they have a sort of, a, they can't be reused, right? So, and then once they are clogged, it becomes difficult for you to breathe. So what I would suggest is that let's not go in for the masks. Uh, a handkerchief or a dupatta uh, or, or some cloth, some form of cloth, especially when you are passing through a visibly dusty environment. Rest of the other time, I don't think that uh, you can use this. The cyclist won't be able to use a mask because they are breathing heavily and this mask cannot support this. Is this right? was a surgical mask? Hardly anything. I mean, just, it's a show off. <laughs> Nothing more. Can't help. This right? kind of mask. This kind of for, for visible dust. Yeah. For, no, not even for visible dust. This is, this I would advise to people who themselves are infected, right? So that they don't spread it, right? You, uh, this mask can't save you, but, uh, well, you can wear this. Um, uh, this is, uh, in fact, putting on these masks are good reminder to yourself that look, you know, I must not venture out on this, I must not do this, I must not, this is sort of a reminder. You know, like, we, I um, read on a hand, it's like this. It's called the, the feel-good feel factor. Feel good factor. Feel so COVID time, this was popularized, this mask was That was a different time. That was a different time. And thankfully, we are out of it. Okay, so are there any question. other questions? Yes. Because I people have to. She wants to ask. So there were two, yeah. three. We can add two, three questions at a, uh, together. Please yeah. take the. Uh, sir, biologically, is it possible to reverse the damage caused by the no. extreme? It's not possible. No. In the younger population also. No. Yes, Yeah, I would say, uh, so there was a question which came that if the air is already so polluted and you deep breathe in, yeah. at the same time, I can see why we deep breathe in because we open the lungs so they can really work well. So there seems to be a contradiction, you know, you, you know, as if, do you wash your room with dirty water? It's almost like that. So can you show us, uh, throw some little bit of light on that? See, what I would say is that there is no, you know, double blind cohort studies that people have done that, okay, fine, there are, in one room, there are five people who are breathing fast and there are five people who are not breathing fast and what happens to them after 10 years, we don't know, right? It is just an extrapolation of our knowledge in, with some sort of an instance and then people would put their logic and their knowledge and then they would come out with these answers, right? So here's what I have to say. Now, uh, if you think that, you know, we are saying that don't go early in the morning in the, so we are just trying to minimize the thing. If you are deep breathing, you are deep breathing because you are exercising. So you are getting benefits of the exercise, right? You are getting the benefits of the pranayam, right? So uh, you don't want to throw the baby with the water. That's what I'm saying. So, TK, I mean, you can't stop, put a pitch cock on your nose and not breathe. That's not going to happen, right? So you have to just take it, um, you know. You're probably making it stronger, the respiratory yeah. organ stronger. I will just There's add. There's somebody who wants to ask a question behind you also. I'll just add yeah, a comment. Now, yeah. As a yoga teacher, we talked about deep breathing. One of the things we do is actually work on the posture. If people exactly. have collapsed lungs, if you sit like this, they automatically breathe in like 40% less. So one of the first things to do is just open their postures. 
And we see in asthmatics especially the, the abdomen is very hard in the diaphragmatic area. So we first allow that to soften. So they just start breathing much better. Before we even venture into the because that can damage if there is weakness inside. Thank you, Doctor. Sir, you were a little apprehensive about the benefits of steaming. And there's I, a yoga um, th therapy called ja Jalniti. Jalniti is different and steaming is different. Okay. The two are two different things. So steaming can be beneficial in this period? Well, if, if you feel that it is helping you, there is no harm. But uh, I have either heard, read or, uh, you know, Neither my colleagues have told me that it works for them. Unless you have stuffy nose, unless your nose is blocked, um, I don't know whether it helps in just taking away the pollution thing. You want to do Jalneti? Please go ahead. Uh, do there, you there, there are three or four more, then we will uh, have to stop the session. Uh, after you, the lady here, this is Tia Mukhopadhyay, and then we have. Uh, do reusable and washable masks like these help? No? Why is that, sir? See, uh, what are we doing with these masks? Uh, these masks, like, for 5% of the time you are putting it here, for 95% of the time you are putting it here, it's not helping you, right? If you are in a visibly dusty environment, you can wear masks. And what are these masks pr protecting from? They are Barely PM10 and above, right? What about the gases? They are coming in. It's not helping you. For that one is an N95 or higher? Uh, why do you want to do this? I mean, it's uh, probably it will restrict your respiration and it will cause more harm to you rather than uh, any benefit. I, are N95s helpful, sir? I don't think so. For pollution, unless you are an industrial worker or you are going on a work, uh, construction site. Okay. I, I will not advise that. This is Tia Mukhopadhyay. Good evening. It was a wonderful uh, session going on. Most of my questions have been answered and asked by others, sensible people. So the thing is that I have, uh, can I use pranayam? I was told not to do it because with a stent and a pacemaker. Is it safe to do deep breathing? The, um, the, uh, my gut feeling says that yes, you can, but uh, in today's day and, day and age of medical legal cases, I would say ask your cardiologist. Right. Right? But I think they can't do that. I will take so, two more questions. Yes. But before that, there's one tip that I would uh, like to give uh, and pass on. In, in this, uh, you know, polluted environment is uh, if you can roll up all your carpets and put them on side, <laughs> right? One, one. Two, the curtains should be light, which can be washed frequently, right? Three, no jhadu. No jhadu. Or no grooming, vacuum. either vacuum cleaning or direct wet mopping, right? Mm -hmm. When you put the jhalu, you know, all that you are doing is that the dust that was, you know, uh, sedimented on the floor, now it is suspended in the air, <laughs> right? This dust was non-respirable and now it has become respirable. After six hours, the dust barely settles down and you would say, hey, ka ganda hai, chalo hai. <laughs> right? So vacuum cleaning will throw the dust out, wet mopping will throw the dust out, not the jar. So Maybe you could also explain to the audience, uh, you, you talked about healthy food. Um, I'm one of the very rare people uh, who eat uh, three fruits different and three vegetables <laughs> different raw for the last 50 years for breakfast and lunch. Uh, most people don't. So maybe you could elaborate that the kind of breakfast that normal North Indians eat in winter and uh, afternoon and pakoras and aloo coconuts and, and all the rest of it uh, is not good for their health. What should they eat? That would be very helpful. He takes fruits in the morning. He has so, a flat, full bubble full of fruits. 
So yes, the fruits are very uh, helpful. They are, uh, there are plenty of minerals and vitamins and antioxidants, more than any capsule, more than any tablet or any syrup that a doctor can prescribe you, right? So go the natural way. Uh, that is one thing that I, I can tell you. And the second thing is... Uh, three colors, three colors. Three colors is, um, in fact, uh, my uh, innovation. Uh, this is my innovation. You know, uh, I feel that one should give a task so that it can be, you know, eat plenty of, or a lot of fruits. Right? This statement versus pick up three fruits and eat them. I have found that my patients follow the Vegar advice much more, uh, you know, seriously as compared to the Bhaut Sare Fal Khane Thi. Everybody has got a different uh, scale of Bhaut Sare. So this is absolutely my innovation, no scientific background. I just want to encourage more fruits uh, and therefore three uh, and plus uh, three different colors means uh, you are getting three different orange uthaya, vitamin C, ye uthaya, ye wo uthaya, wo So it means you are having, you know, everything, a wholesome uh, platter basically. So, so you say jaggery is good for the Jaggery is good. Uh, rest, I don't know. <laughs> we take one last question. Yeah, so was somebody was asking, a yeah. I was asking the same thing. As you said, that indoor pollution is more than the outdoor pollution. So I wanted to ask how to reduce it, uh, how to reduce the indoor pollution. So a few things you already said yeah. about carpets, not to carpets, not have carpets, don't have curtains, um, um, you know, no charu, and uh, some people may like it, some people may not, but keep your pets out of your house. And agarbatti is also possible. Agarbatti, dhubbatti, perfume, room spray, kachwa cha, um, out. Even kachwa cha? <laughs> that is the worst. Might get dengue. Might get dengue. Well, um, you have to trade off certain things. <laughs> right? What about not using chemically based cleaners? You know? Yes, chemical cleaners. Yes. So, so right, we've, um, I think we've taken up a lot of Dr. Ashish James time and we're so grateful. Uh, maybe, you know, you have an interactive website, I think. Yeah. You could share some details and we will put it on our website. Um, and uh, as I said, he's a very caring doctor and you can get an appointment with him at max. It's a little difficult to get an appointment actually, uh, but I'm sure if you give my name, maybe he'll be a little kind of about giving you a quick appointment. I hope you don't need an appointment. Yeah. But if you do, I would strongly recommend it. Thank you very much, Dr. Jen. And uh, it's such a pleasure. And we really benefited from your Yeah, yeah. This, this audience has been really wonderful. And I really love talking to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. send some feedback and some uh, questions, I'll be able to answer that. Right? This will be it. We can go back and then 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 we can go back and then